Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pastor Zainab and today it is just speaking it as it is. We are going to keep it so open, you know, and it is because we want everybody to learn something from this segment of speaking it as it is. And today in speaking it as it is, I want to speak about how to overcome sexual feelings as a single lady or a single Christian man. You know, these are the things that people battle with every day. We must say, when we give our life to Jesus, our bodies are still functional. Our bodies are not dead. So we are functioning. You know, our bodies sometimes, they can take a toll on us. You can feel like, ah, ah this is the day that I really, really feel like I need to go out with a man. This is the time I feel like I really want to be hugged. I really want to be kissed. What do you do in such a moment? I am one person that I'm going to keep it so open because I have been there. And this segment on my YouTube channel is to make sure that we are going to, we are not going to hide anything. We are going to speak it as it is. Those moment comes, you know, when you just feel like today, my body is not keeping quiet. My body needs a man. I need to sleep with a man today. I need to be kissed. I just need a hug, not from a woman. I need a hug from a man. What do you do in this particular time? I have been single for many years. I must say, when my husband died, I was very young. And I stayed single as a Christian woman for over 10 years. And I can testify here on this youtube channel that i was able to keep myself pure how and this is what i will tell you i'm talking out of my experience and here where we are keeping everything open we are talking as it is now number one thing you've got to know when you are a single man or woman and these things are coming on you don't lose your identity there are so many people that get their identity by having a boyfriend or a girlfriend you want just to belong you just want to be seen that you're there that you have not lost it you're still there you can still have a man you know and you can still go out you can still have sex but i'm here to tell you today the best thing that for you to do first of all know that you are christian and what really helped me and kept me on check is the consequences of sexual immorality i studied the consequences of sexual immorality and i was like you know god i don't want to fall into this thing because it is not gonna leave me the same so it is the knowledge that i had on sexual immorality and the consequences of sexual immorality that made me not to lose my identity did i have sexual feelings yes was i lonely yes was i feeling like i should do it yes were there men to run after me wanted to do it yes they were there the enemy is going to make these people available the enemy is going to open a door for you to do it but don't lose your identity as a christian just know that you are a child of god and god has told you not to do it let me read the bible says that uh, I, I i don't want to read scriptures today because i want to, to leave it open but i will say to you keep it keep your identity don't lose it I knew I was a preacher. I knew I was a Christian. And what really, really made me so scared, let me say this, I'm not scared in the way that, you know, I can't do it. I had all the time to do it. I was living alone. I have my car. I can drive anywhere. I can go meet anybody. I can hide anywhere and do it. But I did not want to lose my identity as a child of God. And the consequences that come through sexual immorality. Number one, please know that you are a Christian. You are a child of God. And don't lose that identity. Because the enemy does not strike to live. The enemy strikes to destroy. The enemy strikes to kill. And the enemy stri strikes to steal. There is a story I was told. As I told you, I did a lot of research on sexual consequences of sexual immorality. Even when I was feeling like doing it. You know, I, I had to do a lot of research. And one of the stories I, I read when I was doing the research of the consequences of sexual immorality was a story of another young man. And that story made me so sad. And I knew, Aish, it is not business as usual. It is not only pulling down your clothes and lying on that bed. No, there is more to it. And when I began doing the research, I found out this story that, that really changed my perce perce perception on sexual uh, immorality. You know, it looks like it is a one-minute thing or two-minute thing. You feel happy, joyful, and then you go, no. 
there is much to it. This young man was a university student. I give his story. He was born again. He loved the Lord. He was very sharp. He was very wise. He was doing very well in school. Actually, when the lecturers were failing to come for lectures, he could offer himself to lecture because he was reading prior the topic. So he had all the topic that they were supposed to cover in the course that he was taking. And this young guy was so sharp. I remember him saying he had a very nice handwriting. And he was, you know, he was attracting women in the university. But he said to himself, he will never do sexual immorality because he was a Christian first and he wanted to keep that door shut. He will do it when time is right. We all say that. And you know, Satan tempts us. And the story of this young man changed my perception completely. This young man was writing this story to help Christian, young Christian women and young Christian men. And this guy said, there was a time, you know, when you are so attractive, you are handsome, you are clean, you are neat, you are sharp. Women will always run after you. And women in the university started putting snares on this guy. And this guy was standing until one day he met a very very beautiful charming lady and you know he did not know it was a trap he did not know that that girl was a satanist that girl was a devil worshiper and that girl was coming to steal something from this young man i want you to realize that whatever the devil gives people if at all he gives he steals from the children of god and this guy gave this story and said one time he was tempted and this young beautiful curvy lady Hey, he could stand. He couldn't stand. He couldn't stand the beauty. He couldn't stand the, the glory that this woman was carrying. And this young man said, immediately they went on bed and he undressed and the lady undressed. Of course, they began doing what people begin to do. I don't want to go there. And immediately this guy was on top of this woman and he began doing his thing. Oh, to his amazement, he saw someone leave him. Yeah, and this, the person that was leaving him was him. And behind that person who was him was written all the values these guys carried. Wisdom, knowledge, education, and writing, neatness, everything that this guy was. And this guy was on top of this girl and he was jagger jagari. He saw this man leave and this man walked out of the door. Immediately he knew something was not right. And the guy said, what? Immediately, he finished doing it and rose up and went out and allowed the lady to go. He had lost everything. He had lost everything. From there, he couldn't catch anything in class. From there, his handwriting became something different. His life changed. He began being untidy and clean. Everything. Actually, he got the opposite of everything he had before. And when I was reading that story, and when I was thinking and doing research on the consequences of sexual sin, I said, ah, let me keep my identity. I have values and virtues that I don't want the enemy to steal from me. I have values and virtues that I have to keep them for me to survive in this cruel world. Was I tempted? Oh, yeah. Were they a man? Oh, yeah. Were they good looking? Oh, yeah. But you know what? I remembered the story of this young man. And also the research that I did, like I'm going to be sinning against my own body. So that means I'm going to expose my own body to all manner of wicked stuff, like sicknesses, diseases. You know what I'm talking about? You know, my, my everything that God has given me, like my beauty and all these things is going to evaporate just on that bed that I'm going to use only my five minutes to destroy my life. I said, oh, oh I'm not going to do it. So how did I overcome? As much as I said I was not going to do it, you know, I was still tempted. I had sexual feelings, children of God. Oh, yeah. I could feel sometimes I'm lonely. I need a hug. I need a kiss because it's normal. It's natural. Number two, what I did, I began walking in the light. What really helped me a lot, I avoided watching soap operas and every movie or anything that has sexuality in it. I began now guarding myself and I said, you know what? I'm not going to watch any soap opera. I'm not going to watch any movie that is romantic. I'm not going to go to, you know, pornographic sites. I'm not going to read pornographic stories. I'm not going to see naked men. 
I made a decision within me. How did I overcome? I said, you know what? I'm going to shut myself into my own world, my own world of worship, my own word of prayer, my own word of the word of God. I began unfollowing every page I was following on social media that can just, you know, trigger my mind into sexuality. I unfollowed. If anybody would write anything sexual, I would just unfollow. If anybody would just write something, you know, that can make me feel like I'm lonely, I'm alone, I'll just unfollow. And I decided to change the way I'm walking. And I began walking in the light. Walking in the light is covering myself into one place and saying, no, Zainab, you've got to tell yourself that is not your path right now. The day a man will come, you are going to revenge. But for now, you are alone. Lock every door. That is how I overcame, you know. Not losing my identity as a Christian. And number two, I decided I'm going to lock and shut every pornographic, any romantic thing out of my life. Did I succeed? Yes, I did. How did I succeed? Because it was intentional. I had just made up my mind. Was I tempted? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I would feel like wanting to read these things. Sometimes I would feel like I would really want to know how it goes out there. Maybe to go to a pornographic site. Oh, yeah. I was tempted. And that's why I'm just putting it open. Don't go to those sites. But anytime I felt tempted, like I want to go to those sites, that I want to see the way things are happening, I would tell myself, you are a child of God. Don't expose yourself into things that will take you years to fight. I was able to take charge of my life and tell my life, you know what? I'm not going to go there. Did I succeed? Oh, yes, I, I succeeded. Was I tempted once and one, one here and there? Oh, yes, I was tempted, especially to read love stories that would make you feel like, oh, oh, my. Oh, yeah. Was I tempted to do all these things that people do? Yes, but I carried my destiny. My destiny was everything. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it for my sake. I'm not going to allow the devil because the devil doesn't want need a big door. The devil just need a small gate, a small door, and it will come with destruction, come with killing, come with stealing, and he will leave you just like that. Number three, what I did, I changed my thinking. I stopped watching those things and I began working on my mind because the mind is the part of it. And I began changing my thinking. I began convincing myself whether I feel sexual right now, whether I go to pornographic sites, whether I read those books, whether I read these things, I'm not going to be helped. I'll be just defiling myself. I began changing my mind by speaking to myself all the time. It is not necessary. It is not important. It is not beneficial. I'm not going to gain anything out of it. And that is now what I did. And then I made sure, number five or four, that I'm going to put my guard. I will never let my guard down. What does it mean? I'm not going to lock myself with a man in the house. I will make sure if there is a man in my house, there is my house girl, my son, and other people. And I decided intentionally, I will never live alone. I always have people in my house, by the way. I had my, my niece with me, my, my housemaid with me, my nephew. I've always lived with people and my own son so that I don't put the guard down. What do I mean? A man would want to visit you in your house, sister. A woman would want to visit you in your house, brother. And anytime they come and maybe their agenda and their motive was to lay you, you know, on bed, they will feel like it is not possible. And they will not allow, even if they will, maybe it will rain and they will perhaps, you know, spend a night in your house. Give them a room and make sure in that room there is another person. Don't allow your guard to go down. Make sure you don't give room to the devil and that one and anytime i would sit with a man whom i knew in my heart i'm not gonna marry that person every time they wanted to bring stories on sex and sexuality i was like i don't talk those things i don't go that direction it was a fight it was a war it was intentional i had decided to live a holy life i had decided to keep myself pure though my, and then i realized uh -uh, there is a prayer I prayed. Oh my, I could have forgotten the prayer. I told God one thing. And you know, the Bible says, ask it shall be given unto you. Anything you ask God is going to honor it and give it unto you. Guess what? I told God, thank you for sexual feelings. But you know what, Lord? Take the sexual feelings away from me. Return them when I will have a man. 
and return them good measure. Mm. Bishop Jose, I can tell you, they were good measure. What am I saying? We are keeping it open in this segment. And when I got married, I'm now enjoying my sexual life. And I also realized what could have made me fall. It's something that when you do it once, you feel like you don't even want to do it again. I don't do it daily now. But I was like, like, oh, oh, I really wanted it. But look, we don't do it every day. Not because my husband cannot do it to me every day. As like, I think once a week or twice a week is enough for me. I want to be in prayer again. I want to read the word of God. So this thing, don't do it. This is my story. I overcame sexual feelings as a single lady. Yes, I was tempted. Chances were there. Opportunities were there. I could do anything to do it, but I loved my destiny, my relationship with God, my eternal life, and I fought it until the day a man laid a ring on this finger. The Lord bless you. Until next time from me, it is goodbye and God bless.